Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've been very busy since the last episode and it's been quite a big change. So as you can see here I'm starting to build out into well, my um, sort of giant satellite for want of a better word. At the end of the last episode I basically built up this area here I think. So we had the um, the landing pad which unloaded into the provider warehouse and the st and, um, and then the bots would, dis would distribute stuff from there either to the boxes along here or into the uh, storage warehouse at the top so I had um, I could always make sure I had all of my stuff sorted and the reason I've got an active provider warehouse here is because I don't want this to fill up because if this fills up then there's a risk of the, of the landing pad not emptying properly and if the landing pad doesn't empty then I think the next rocket to come down can end up I don't know crashing or something going something going terribly terribly wrong with it so that's why I've got the um, the purple warehouse here um, and I can keep an eye on that and just make sure that it's, it's always empty like it is now as you can tell by the lack of icons on it uh, I've now got some of these the ones that are actually that I actually need unloading onto onto the um, onto the belts along here and all of these ingredients are being passed out and we're starting to make things which is <laughs> quite a big improvement over before the first thing we're doing along here is unbarreling a load of the liquid so we've got the um what's this this is lube and and water and heavy oil and and petroleum gas all being pulled out of the barrels and the reason i've got them all crammed together in a small space here is so that they can all unload the empty barrels onto this single belt here which then takes them back and dumps them into the um uh, what do we call it into the, into the storage warehouse and that's because if you don't have some way of getting rid of the empty barrels, they will eventually just start to stack up and cause problems. Uh, because they, yeah, because you have, the, they are a byproduct of producing the fluids or whatever it is you're looking for. The problem with that is that means this is now filling up with empty barrels. And I've already filled up my, um, my, car, uh, my capsule for taking me back to the planet with, with empty barrels, as many of them as I possibly can. <laughs> and it's not made much of a dent in this, so... I'm probably going to fill up my inventory as well, I guess, um, before I go back again. But it's it's a bit of a problem because I think I'm going to have a lot of those hanging around. And that's after I've put as many as I can. Well, I've put 200 into this chest down here because they are eventually going to be used as part of one of the... Um, as part of the science pack production. But I don't think they're going to be used in anything like the sort of quantities that we're they're being generated in. So, after that, I then had a... Um, and this is all a bit crammed in, if I'm being honest, but that's sort of the sp I'm embracing the spaghetti because, well, there's a couple of reasons. One is because I don't really know what I'm doing here, so I'm building things up as I go and doing whatever seems like a good idea at the time. And also, because I have to use the, um, what do we call it, the substrate stuff for all of my um, all of my construction, all everywhere where I want to build. It's like it's like having to build everything on landfill. It's like playing C block. So everything has to be built onto that. So I'm trying to build as compact as possible. It's not like normal Factorio where you just spread stuff out to make it easier. But anyway, so I'm building the um, the space the uh, space manufactories in here. So they're, they're basically a type of even better assembly machine. And they're what I need to do all of the advanced space construction. And they're huge. Look at this thing. It's massive. Um, but then they can produce lots of things that the normal size assembly machines can't. So this one, for example, I've got, I'm feeding in uh, the heavy oil and the is this cosmic water by this point? Yes, yes. Over here I've got a, a de decontamination facility. That's taking in these two liquids, the uh, lube and the um, and the water, and making cosmic water. Which, as far as I can tell, is just water that doesn't freeze because it's had some lubricant added to it. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure of the, um, the science behind that, but it sounds, like, it sounds like it's just making some sort of emulsion. But it's, yeah, it's a little bit weird. But this is something I think I have to do in space. I, can't, I don't think I can put these on the, on the, on the, um, on the planet. So have to do it up here, bring up all the water by barrel. And as you can see, the amount of water I brought up wasn't remotely enough. I've run out of that already, and I've got loads, but I've got loads and loads of lube left. And loads of that one left. I don't Oh, that was the water. Okay. So loads of petroleum gas left. So it's heavy oil and water seem to be the things I've run out of first. And whatever this was supposed to be. Oh, and um what do you call it? Uh, scaffolding, scaff space scaffold, that's, that's the thing. Um, although that could be just because I've grabbed it all and shoved it in my inventory. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to need to rethink a little bit the the proportions that I'm bringing some of this stuff up in. Um, because, for example, here again, I've run out of low density structures. So, so some, this, this, but it's all a sort of, all going to need a bit of tweaking and, and just bumping the numbers up to make sure that I have a good balance of, of all the things I need. 
Anyway, so I've run out of water. But that's okay, because I've made a decent amount of cosmic water. This pipe is mm, a third full. And it's made me some man manufactories. I've built some of those up. <clears throat> and this one now is building the, uh, the cooling liquid. Uh, what does it call it? A thermofluid. There we go. That's close enough to cooling liquid. And this is stuff that you pump around and you can then use... Um, where are they? Here we go. The heat exchangers or thermal radiators in order to take that down from 25 degree thermofluid down to the minus 10 degrees thermofluid. And I think there's another type of thermofluid as well that's even colder um, that's down at sort of almost sub uh, almost um, absolute zero. But I don't need that just yet. However, I did need to make the thermal radiators and they needed to be made in another manufactory. Uh, so I had a load of parts coming in here. Then I need to make supercomputers, which I'm going to need for another of the steps in here. <clears throat> so basically everything up to about... Oh, and then I needed... Yeah, everything up to about here is just making the buildings that I'm going to need in order to produce the... Um, in order to produce the science packs. Then this is producing one of the um, one of the consumables that I need. Um, because they get well, it'll get passed back and forth between here. So when it, when it's actually used, it produces the warmer thermofluid, and I can pump that back in and rechill it. So I don't need to make quite as much in here as I, as the diagram implies, but I am going to still need to make a certain amount because I think it's only about a 95% um, recovery rate or something like that. The, uh, the radiators, whatever they're called, um, being made here are absolutely fine. I've got got a couple of them those aren't going to get used up the supercomputers when I place them they're not going to get used up they're like they're basically an assembly machine of, of, um, of, of a different different type so those are okay these are all making buildings then along here we're making the what's this called chemical gel which is um, I don't know it's 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 some sort of goo that's required at various stages and then we need we need that for making these substrate things but I haven't but at this point I've started as you can see the belts have stopped and that's because the reason I stopped when I when I got to this point is because I've run out of belts. Um, if I go back to my character, yeah, I've got I've got quite a lot more of the space scaffold, so I could chuck that back in the box over there. Um, but I've absolutely completely run out of belts, and so the iron has stopped here. And I need to get the iron and the glass all the way down here to this this machine in order to make the um, in order to make the the data storage substrates, which I can then make, which I can then polish in this machine. No, polish it. Yeah, polish in this machine. Um, and then put into this machine where they can be made into memory sticks. But I'm also going to need to feed in copper and um, and uh, circuits for that. And then once that's done, then I carry on down the process. I put the data on the memory cards. And then finally, I think at that point, I might have all of the ingredients I need somewhere up here to start actually making the memory cards. And I can start shipping them back and putting them into the uh, lab over there to, to, to do the, actually do the research. The other thing I'm going to have to think about at some point is bringing up the other science packs in, uh, in in my rocket. Now that's not too much of an issue because I don't have, I don't think I was overfilling the rocket. Uh, let's have a look at the um, the rocket itself back down on Norvis. Here we are. Yeah, there's plenty of room along the bottom here to feed the um, the, assembly, the the science packs in. Although I do have to admit, this is nearly full at this point. I'm going. I, I, I'm not sure exactly how what I'm going to do in order to keep this um, this running. I'm, I could build another one of these, put it over here, and then have a second rocket goes up and trigger and just take up whichever rocket has the stuff that I need. Feels wasteful, but it would work. Um, the other slight problem, and it's, it's only a, it's, it's a relatively minor problem, but it is a a thing nonetheless is that when the rocket actually launches there's a short time period of I don't know it's, it's probably it's less than a minute I think but but a, there's a relatively short time period where there's n technically nothing in here because the rocket's gone and it hasn't landed at the other end yet which means the ingredients at the top end haven't been passed over into the um, in, in, into the circuit network so that's why in here we've got a fair amount of, of a sort of these some of these things have overrun a bit so if we look at the um, if we look at the circuit network you can see that there's um, 1.1 thousand red circuits more than there should be now that I'm not so sure about but the, the 710 batteries the 396 lubricants and so on a lot of these things I suspect is from the um, the arm going back and forth and passing things over that weren't strictly needed. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of excess stuff being taken up top by that. 
Now, I'm not really sure what to do about that. Maybe there's some way of turning off all of these inserters if there's no rocket. Yeah, I could I could turn off all of the inserters if there's no if there's no rocket sections in there. And then have that trigger so maybe could I do this? Let's have a look. Enable conditions no. Um I can configure the filter, that's quite a nice thing. But I'm not sure that's useful. Why isn't that filtered? That should be filtered anyway. Where was it? Where was that one I was looking at? Because it didn't have a filter set. And they're all supposed to be... Oh, it does have a filter set. There it is. Okay. Oh, that's the grab dive. Yeah, okay. That's what it's holding. That's what it's filtering on. So it was set up correctly. But I could set the filter... Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Also interesting. Another... What I was thinking then. Another possibility is you can set the filters based on the circuit network. Um... That would require me redesigning the whole process and, and putting in some sort of subtract, some sort of negative in there somewhere, and that's going to be an enormous headache. Um, I'm not even sure how I'd do that, um, but I could set it so that it will only put things in that it's that are being that it's being told to by the circuit network, and that would be quite neat. Um, except I can't think of a good way to do it. I also have broken this. Let's set that back to what it's supposed to be. There we go. Yeah, I can't think of a good way to do that at the moment. But it would be potentially useful. Anyway, uh, it would allow me to double the amount of things I could load in because I'd be able to have two, both sides of the bay, each belt going to here and then having it, yeah, load, load from there. So, yeah, maybe. Um, but I think it's probably going to be easier just to build another ro rocket silo. <laughs> right. So, yeah, as I was saying, the, the, there's, a, there's a minor issue in that too much stuff can sometimes be put into these. If it gets overwhelming and I have silly amounts of something at the top, I could always come down here and turn off some of the, or remove some of these um, these uh, inserters. Or just take, just disable them temporarily from here by clearing out their whitelist. That would do quite well. Um, yes. I've kind of lost track of what I was saying now. Um, so yeah, so that's something that, it, that could that could work fairly well. Um, it, it does work fairly well, rather. Um, I just need to make sure I, I keep things balanced. As you can see, there's still not enough of these belts being produced, even though up here I tripled the rate. It was no, many, many times the rate it was producing them at. Oh, but that's because these electric motors aren't coming through fast enough. <clears throat> that's by far the limiting factor. Okay, I need to come back down here, put in another copy of this electric motor production facility. Maybe sort of. So, Oh wait, no, that's slow because this cop oh it's this copper wire down here. That's the problem. So I need to feed in a lot more. Co <laughs> this is traditional standard Factorio stuff, isn't it? I haven't got enough belts. Why is that? I haven't got enough motors. Why is that? I haven't got enough copper wire. Why is that? I haven't got enough machines producing it. Why is that? Because there isn't room for it. So I'm going to have to pull this copper out somewhere. Maybe I could pull it out. Oh dear, this is horrible. I don't know. I'm going to have to find a way to make a lot more copper wire because I need a lot more of these belts, though. So that's that's definitely going to be a um, a thing. So that's yeah, that's my, my my progress so far. I'd say it's going pretty well. Um, I've got I've made some progress. It is a bit of a struggle up here, as I said, because of the um, having to build everything on on the uh, on the scaffolding and having to build that out. And as I get out a bit further this way, there's some rock here I can build out onto. There's a little bit more here that's just going to get absorbed by my main bus as it grows. But that's not something I can really rely on. That's not that's only only a tiny a tiny improvement. <laughs> so there's a, yeah, there's a lot of this. A lot of this having to build out into space is not difficult but it but it's very resource intensive yeah it stops me wanting to expand out and just take up as much space as i really want to now i am building this off the bus as is sensible so later on if i did realize i need these a lot faster i can put more of these going off up here and <laughs> into space but uh, so far i'm just i'm just building out a proof of concept at the moment to get everything being being constructed on 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 scale I am going to need to build more of these actually, the um, the labs. Having only one lab up here is all very well and I've packed it full of productivity modules because 
all the science is now so expensive that I think that's a good idea. But I am going to want to sort of push out more more of these science machines. Probably up here, have a sort of a gigantic pillar of science heading off up this way into the into the dark. Um, and then have and then have belts up here carrying the, the science packs to them. So I'll, I'll need to move some of these um, solar arrays around. But that's that's not a problem. That's easy. Um, but yeah, so quite a bit to do. And a lot of that is reliant on these belts. So yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is is going to be head down there and sort that out. In the meantime, let's dump some of this stuff that I don't need so much into this into this one here. So I can take as many of these barrels as I can down with me. So I have absolutely no need for scaffolding. I have no need for space assembly machines, manufactories. Chem plants I can get from down there. Productivity modules I've got. Basically, so much of this stuff has no purpose. Well, it's being produced in much larger quantities down on the ground, so there's no point in taking it with me. I need to take those down so I can recycle them. Okay, I th think. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. This stuff. Oh, it, might, it might be useful up here. I don't know. I don't know whether it's useful up here. Those can go. Okay, and now I'll just take as much pipe as I can. A pipe. As many empty barrels as I can. Hop in my capsule, and now we can head back to uh, back to the planet. Whoosh! There we go. <laughs> Touchdown. Uh, that's an odd place for it to have put me. I don't know why it's put me there. Um, but what I do need to do now is unload this and unload all of the pipes from my inventory. Now, where were fluids being put into pipes? Because I want barrels. Say barrels, Lawrence. Barrels. Yeah, all the barreling is happening up here. Okay, so I need to feed. <laughs> I need a, I need a belt that's going to take those up because there's too many for me to carry by hand, basically. I don't know why it's landed here. I was expecting it to land by my, um, by my landing pad. Funnily, do I have? Do I do still have a landing pad? Don't I? No, I don't have a landing pad. That's probably why it's landed here. Okay, so for now. Oh, I'll put, I'll put in a temporary belt for now. That's not a problem. Except I've only got three of them. Uh, turn, my bots off. turn my bots off. And now if I get out my one piece of belt. No, my, one of my three pieces of belt. And I'll run it up along here. And then I can unload. So hopefully unload straight out of that onto this. It's a long old belt. Here we are. Okay. And I need to put the belt barrels onto the bottom of the belt so that they um, will attempt to be used up, attempt to use up the the ones from the supply before it makes more of them because otherwise you just end up with too many barrels and there's a way through here mm -mm, delicious spaghetti there okay so I can leave the bots to build to build that up and then run back down here again if I put another landing pad down which I'm going to do because I want to have a sensible landing place. <laughs> then I'll need to redo this belt, but that's not a problem. Belt doing belts is easy. Put that there. Power. Put it in the right place. There we go. Okay, so that's now as soon as these belts as soon as the bots come along and build these belts, here they come now. Flying straight past. And once the landing capsule starts to empty a bit. I can then start to put the barrels that I've brought up in my inventory into it and it'll just unload them onto the belt as well and they'll all go into the right place. Let's play can the bot stay ahead of the line of pipe, uh, line of barrels. Doing okay so far. Ooh, not quite. <laughs> okay, while they finish that off, I shall also get rid of my used life support canisters. So 47 of those I've got through now. Um, and as discussed in previous episodes, that means now the logistics bots will come, take them away from me, and carry them all up to the life support system up, way up, up, way up here, where they'll get shoved into the box, blue box here and pass through again to be reused. Now, have I have I wired this up? sensibly because one of the things I'm thinking is that I don't know how to force it to use the like the canisters from this machine as opposed to the ones from this machine I think I probably need to 
Obviously, I need to wire up this inserter to say don't run unless. But I'm not quite sure what the unless is. Oh, I could connect it to this box here and have this one run if there's less than 50 in it or something like that. And have this one run all the time. And that way this would fill up to beyond whatever number I, I choose. But it would use these ones up until... But it would never make any more. And it would just have a bigger buffer in there. That's probably the easiest way to do it. In fact, let's pick up that as well. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> Should have waited until it was empty. So I can uh, chest for now. Right. And there we go. The barrels of all. Yeah. They're, okay. They look like they're backed up, and, and in fact they have backed up on the on the on the belt. But that's not a problem. It just means that that's my supply of barrels now, and it won't use it. Make it won't make any new ones until basically all of those have been used up. So that's good. Working as intended. Oh, a car. That was kind of pointless. Okay, so what was I going to do? I was going to get a... Oh, I haven't got any wires. I, just... I haven't got any bits for wires. I haven't got any copper. What? Oh. I dumped all of that useful stuff before I came back down, so I'd have more room to carry um, empty barrels. Just because... Because I don't really want... I don't... The problem is, I'm, I'm, I'm worried they might just build up to such an extent up the top that it that becomes a problem. Right, okay, so I want copy that over there. In fact, let's drop that to 100. And then let's remove that condition. And now, yeah, so now this, this, these, it will run off the life support capsules made by this machine, or cleaned out by this machine, whenever they're available. And this machine will only be used... The, the, the capsules from this machine will only be used if this ever drops below 100. And if that drops below 100, it's probably because I've lost some somewhere or... I don't know. Or I've decided I want to have a lot more in circulation because I'm going on longer missions or something like that. But in, gen in general, that will mean there's always at least 100 in there. But these will get used up by priority. So that's exactly what I want. There's no ammunition here. Why is there no ammunition here? Because there's no red ammunition being fed in, because I ripped up the station and forgot to. Oh, you idiot! And forgot to link in the supply from the other side. Oh. Well, <laughs> that's something I'm going to need to go and fix. I'll do that between episodes. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think that's a good point to end this. I've been waffling for a while. I've shown you all of the exciting stuff I've been doing in space and then brought it all back down to earth with a, with a bang and got things going again here. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time when uh, who knows what I'll have done by then, but hopefully it'll involve fixing this ammunition supply. <sighs> That's kind of important. Anyway, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.